Hey y'all, hey! So it is Makara Reed. I am the blogger and content producer for moremakarablog.com. I cover topics such as fashion, my style of life, and open discussions. So for this episode, I have been just digging and digging for so much stuff that I've just been sitting on for quite some time. And this one conversation that I had with a good friend of mine, I was supposed to be on my podcast, the Makara session, almost two years ago, but I just abruptly stopped doing podcasts. But I've been just sitting on that episode with me and my friend for a very long time. It's, it's about to be two years. And I listened back to it and I'm like, I need to release this. I know we're probably not in the same frame of mind. I kind of am about 90% of that conversation was definitely, it's definitely still me as far as the dating scene, but, um, I'm not sure about him, but I feel like I need to release this information is very, it was very interesting. I feel like I want to get more into, this type of debates or discussions, I should say, you know, pulling actual people and having a real good dialogue with people. Because I don't feel like people really have sit downs and are very detail oriented as far as what they want or are able to describe what they want. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing more of this. I don't care if it's with my friends or business partners or just randoms I definitely feel like I want to do more open discussions on topics specifically you know within the African-American community because I feel like I know definitely I definitely know what I'm talking about because I live an African-American lifestyle but I'm not limited to others but I'm just saying I just feel more comfortable and confident speaking as far as that term but We are going to get into that episode, but I'm just going to have to warn you ahead of time. Please, please, please excuse the quality of the microphone because my voice is like extremely low. I did not know what the fuck I was doing at that time. I think that was like my first time recording and using um, the software like ever. I didn't understand like the levels and all this other stuff, but... Please excuse the quality. I did try to get it fixed up by a professional engineer. Shout out to my engineer. Um, But yeah, excuse the quality. But you still can hear us. And also excuse him for having a cold. Um, But yeah, definitely check out this episode. I'm going to call it The Talk about millennial dating that is what i'm going to call it and also make sure you subscribe to moremakarablog.com soundcloud or youtube check out the episode and here it is hey 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 shit about dating oh god (laughs) i'm over you hey 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 this is makara reed at the makara session Today, I have a very good friend that listens to all of my random rants. Yes. Mr. Akoyes Kelly. (laughs) So, say hi. (laughs) What's going on, everyone? (laughs) So, tell the folks, the people, the listeners, who Akoyes is, where they can find you, what you do, where you live. I'm playing, but you (laughs) you can go in depth with yourself. It's hard not to find me, at least online. In person, it's very hard to find oh, me. But yes. online, you can find me anywhere. A lover's ambition dot com. It's the website. Uh, once again, Aquaeus, founder of a lover's ambition lifestyle group, which is a brand development agency. And ultimately, you know, I'm really a brand strategist. My background is in music as well as education. So I like to consider myself a brand strategist. Mm-hmm. educator and music publisher as well and my ultimate mission is really to just use my influence to project positivity across the globe and you know invest in the collective future of society through four things 
I consider my four pillars, which is the arts, which are the arts, education, entertainment, and leadership. So those are my four pillars. And the Lover's Ambition Lifestyle Group is what allows me to articulate that um, with the world. So that's that's me. That's what I'm about. Woo woo! Aquarius. And where can they find you on social media so, so they can all stalk you? So socials, Twitter, <laughs> at Aquarius, A-Q-U-A-U-S. Say, you better spell that name yeah, out, boy. Everything's, everything's pretty much at Aquarius. A as in Adam apple. or Apple. Adam's apple. <laughs> Q as in quail. Quail or Q tip. Oh lord. U as an umbrella. A as an <laughs> apple. U as an umbrella. S as in serious or sexy Damn. or Sam. Oh lord. Anywho. So, yeah, at Aquarius Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Aquarius Kelly. You can find me. So yeah, I'm out there definitely. LinkedIn. Hit me up. I like LinkedIn. But anywho. So guess what? What? I've been having these crazy stalkers just inboxing me and DMing me and <laughs> it's not very attractive to me. So how do you feel about the online dating nowadays? Because, you know, we're millennials and stuff is definitely in change mode. I'm not really big on this whole online dating thing, but what are your thoughts since you're a male and... So, we have to analyze this. I'm a, I'm like super like <laughs> philosophical and analytical when it comes to things. We have to look at this from a few different viewpoints. So, we have dating. And then we just have the intention for sexual interaction, right? Stop the madness. I, know, I do no booty shots. I do no bend overs. I'm the stankest girl probably. So let's let's look at this. When we when we talk online dating, let's outline some platforms. What are some websites or platforms that people will go to for online dating, like actual dating? I know when a couple of my friends and mentors set me up on that online dating. I know it was black people, black people meet stock. I don't even know the name. Plenty of fish. I hated that site. Yeah. Um, I didn't even let them do the third one, but those were the two, and I was like, take me off this bad, and now it's straight Instagram, DM me, slide in your DM, or it's Facebook with these long, elaborate love letters. Slide in your DM. You People say that? Slide in your DM, girl. That's crazy. Slide in your DM? Dudes really be using that line? Yeah, what you mean? Yeah. What I mean? I'm like on another planet right now. I know, but yeah, that's what they say. Slide in your DM, girl. Well, I would never say that. But my approach is certainly different. I know. It's pretty bad, but... So, there's dating and then there's hookup. The hookup. Like Tinder. That's straight up hookup. That's not dating. I don't do that. I know my good friend from back in the day, he would probably be into stuff like that, but I don't do that. Like, I had a Tinder up. You know, and I, it's crazy that I'm even talking about this. But the reason why is my cousin and my boy, they used it. So I had it. I don't know what they used it for. Well, what did you use it for? <laughs> okay, it's- I had it up just to have it up, you know, see who's, don't see who's on finesse. there. Don't be trying to finesse me. See, see who's on there. I ain't use it for hookup. <laughs> I ain't hook up on it. Get a quick little nut. <laughs> Don't even. Yo, this is bad for PR right now. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, go on with your so, logic. So, I had it deactivated, had it again, deactivated it, had it again. So, why is it on at all? I guess it's just out of curiosity, yo. Like, I'm a very curious person. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know... I can't just, I just, I just, I'm not the hookup kind of type. I have had one night stands, of course. of course, yeah. But me, like, really sitting down and looking at it mm-hmm. from a broader perspective, it's like, man, this isn't for me, you know? Gotcha. See what I'm saying? Gotcha. But I will try things. Like, I try a lot of things out. Of course. Okay. Yeah. But it, it definitely wasn't for me. So you've done the online dating, kind of, sort of. I've 
It depends what you can like. Okay, so have I ever started a profile on an online dating right, website? And you started communicating with someone, and then you guys actually met in person. <laughs> yes, you have. I met one person in person. Okay, so have I. So how did that go? It was cool. It was more on a, a potential friendship kind of thing. Because the thing is, when I look at certain profiles, I look for things that I have in common. Mm -hmm. So we have music in common. Like so She was, was into lie, DJing then? and stuff like that. If it was a lie, then it was a lie. It wasn't the one anywhere. Was this in New Jersey or down south? Nah, nah. This was out here. Like We oh. met in the city. Mine was a disaster. He lied. Yeah. He did not look how he looked on his profile. Wow, that's that's like a, a crazy lie. I had to leave. Like, I left. I paid for my, my portion of the food, and I left. Yo, I don't blame you. It was a joke, and I yelled at my friend. I said, this was a fucking joke. I gotta go. I cannot do this anymore. That's insane, like... Nah, the person I met was a real person. Like, okay. Yeah. And it was more on the strength of common denominator. Like, yo, you know, I vibe to this, you vibe to this. Having to be in the city. Let's link up. That's a nice little happily ever after story. Mine was a disaster. Yeah. And the crazy so sorry for you. I know. And I ran into him like months later. But he didn't know it was me. He kept turning around. Yeah. Like, I know her, but I don't know her. I told my friends we gotta go because I know him. Yeah, yeah. We had to go. Yeah, girls be quick to dip. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Wow. So, how is the in person dating life? In person dating life? Yes. Like you randomly meet someone, no technology, and you guys hook up. When was the last date that you went on a quiz? Because you're a workaholic. I know. So far. Yeah. I honestly can't remember the last date I work on. Usually, I like to mix business and pleasure. So if it's a date, it's not officially a date. I mean, but that's okay. But when was your? I'm last like date? always super politically correct. Oh but. God! So my last, last date, date. Yes. I really don't know. I can't remember. When was the last time you bought a female some flowers? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Yo. Why that laugh? Yo, I haven't brought. A girl flowers in like. What do you mean? Two thousand since two thousand eight. What kind of gentleman are you? Why haven't you bought? That's an insane female? question. What kind of gentleman? I I, I consider know. myself to be a pretty, pretty well gentleman. This is funny. So why haven't you bought any flowers for anyone? Because I haven't really had anyone to buy flowers for does that make sense yeah i'll let you slide nah 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 we want to hit this deep like that's a it's a good question so let's go back right mm -hmm. to, so I, flowers to you is something that you give to someone that is special yes okay so yeah. you don't i don't i don't just i don't give things out Mm -hmm. To just give things out, like even that, just flowers, even flowers, cause, or plants, or whatever the case yeah. may be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because the thing with me is, when I do something, mm -hmm. I don't do it just to do it. I do it because there's a a reason behind it, and there's a a level of special thought behind it as well. Okay. So when we speak value. If I was to give flowers to this girl and the next girl and the next girl, sure, they would all appreciate it. It would be sweet. Mm -hmm. But to me, knowing that all these girls got flowers, it decreases the value this is true. of me giving. But a lot of males do not think that way. Ab absolutely. I know that. A, a lot of males don't think. A lot of females don't think. A lot of people don't think. This is true. You know? But, yeah, I like to be... Realistic, and I've messed up. Like we could talk about some instances I messed up, maybe. But so <laughs> this is bad for the press. So <laughs> check it. <laughs> you get me into this now. You get me hyped up. So talk about it. Uh, him. I forgot what I what I was about to say. Your instance on flowers and how you messed up. 
Yeah. So the last girl I brought flowers for was in 2008. 2008. Mm -hmm. I was in college. She was going to school in Virginia. No, Maryland, Maryland, Maryland. Hey, yeah. Maryland. So I sent the flowers. This this was for her birthday, actually, mm. in September. And that was that was the last person I remember getting flowers for. What kind of flowers did you buy her? I can't remember. You can't remember. You're such a guy. I can't remember, though. But it, oh, it was a nice package. Let's say that. You're such a guy. Go ahead. <laughs> so that was the last time. Mm -hmm. From there, like even relationships, I haven't been in a boyfriend title i haven't been in a title relationship does that make sense it does in a while it makes sense where aquarius like where this is aquarius's girl gotcha the, you know the whole something title. like that mm -hmm. aquarius is this girl's man right the title i talk to girls of course but i haven't been in a title relationship in a, in a minute which is crazy and we can uncover why as well if you would like, but that's a whole nother level. So why so, is it so hard to title, to do the whole title thing? Like what what is the process? The title is special. Okay, so what does it take to get the title? I'm very serious about the things that I do. I'm very serious about my brand. What, I'm very what serious things? about business. Okay. I'm very serious about the relationships I engage in. So in order for my my brand my name mm -hmm. to be aligned with a certain girl or woman i feel we must be compatible mm -hmm. on a, a level of a level where we're growing together i like to call it holistically compatible right you know so me and this is tie into maybe another episode me growing up i was i grew up in a household where that wasn't your traditional household. So I would say I grew up in a household that was that had a, a spiritual foundation. We didn't really have much of a religious foundation. Mm -hmm. We were more of a spiritual household mm -hmm. where we would go to a mosque, we would go to a church. Mm -hmm. You know, we we would go to different different places of worship okay you know we weren't really tied down anything i was born in a vegan household so my Super diet interesting. my diet was very different from most people mm -hmm. so that alone kind of pro prohibits the i guess holistic compatibility in, in certain ways because for a lot of people like food means a lot like dating Usually yeah. when you go dating, where's the first place you go? A restaurant, right? A restaurant, right? which is super boring. But so you only date... Hey, wait, so do you only date vegan girls? No, no. I'm not saying I only date vegan girls. When I was younger... So, dating again. When I was younger, like, a date wasn't a date. Okay. Like, it's not like you were going out to restaurants when you were younger. It's, it's like you were hanging out in the park, park maybe. Yeah, Y'all went went to school together, right, stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I kissed. Did I kiss girls and make out with girls who yes. ate me? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but now, when we talk the dating scene now, mm -hmm. going out to a restaurant, even meeting a family, like the culture around food is is very important. Right. Like there's certain cultures where. Food if you is, can't eat the food, it's like it's disrespectful. It's disrespectful. Yeah. And there are a lot of things I can't eat. So that it makes it very difficult for me to be for me to really feel comfortable, you know, and, and get acclimated to certain environments. Gotcha. You know? So I mean there are a lot of different levels to this. For me at least, for me. So how do you actually get compatible with someone that's not vegan in the past how did i get compatible with somebody who was not vegan yes like when y'all they're just sexy I was like what <laughs> show these bad so when y'all went to restaurants like what we didn't go to restaurants <laughs> so so where I'm did we go right this is just one note i move fast let's just say that <laughs> 
So this was definitely just a one two banger and Nah, it, it wasn't a one two banger. It was um, maybe like five. S- hit one, skip two, and bang at three. No, I'm just kidding. You were such it, a guy. It it was so a lot a lot of people that mm-hmm. I clicked with even if even though what it may it may not have been holistically, but we clicked on a certain level. Mm-hmm. Where maybe she thought I was cute. I thought she was cute. Maybe she was playful. I liked a few things. Whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of a lot of the relationships I've been in have come through mutual friends. Like I would meet a girl who was the sister of my boy's whatever. I don't like that. Something like that. See what I'm saying? So might be somebody I met at a roller skate ring or met while at the beach something like that gotcha so that's usually how it works for me like i don't go to bars i don't drink i don't smoke sure i'm don't. definitely not the bar type no. so i'm not to pick up a girl at a club type yeah you don't do clubs too much even though i mean that may have happened once or twice but God. even with that it was through a friend's party like i would be there Right. Because my friend had an event or had a party. Mm-hmm. His friend's friend. Gotcha. Stuff like that. So that's the connection. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Very interesting. So the dating life now is kind of just on ground level, I'm going to say. My dating life? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even say I have a dating life right now. <laughs> I- so no one has tried to talk to you. I really don't know. Like it, it depends. What do you mean? You don't know. <laughs> no one flirts with you. I I have I have conversations mm-hmm. that may stimulate your mind. Yeah, your stimulate manhood. my inter- intellectual curiosity. <laughs> this is hilarious. Yeah. So, what would you think I should handle my situation as far as the digital? The whole social media thing. I don't respond, but some just, I actually know them. And they don't so, talk about it in person. So, if you were interested, you would obviously respond. No, I feel like sometimes I need to respond in person. The whole hiding behind the, the screen, I think, is super whack and unattractive to me. So, if, if somebody hits you up in your inbox mm-hmm. and he's like, Hey. What's good with you, Ma? I really like that profile pic you just posted 37 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> How about we meet up in person? And you look at their profile. It's like, nah, he's cute. And then you Google him. It's like, oh, he's he got a good job. Oh, he's doing a few things. I would still be iffy. Why would you be iffy? I'm just not big on the whole internet. I like the whole meet you in person to see where your vibe is. So how about this? So the internet is a medium that allows people to connect in ways that they wouldn't traditionally be allowed to connect because of space and time. You can't really be everywhere at the same time. But on the internet, it expands your horizon. This is true, but on the internet, I am a business. I'm a brand. I'm not really, I don't really feel like you're engaging with the real me. I think you you like the idea of me. Because a lot of the times when I do sit down with someone, like they're very wild by my conversation. I always like that saying where someone may be fascinated about the idea of you or of us or of something as opposed to the real mm-hmm. it thing and that does ring true a lot of time yeah that one male that i had dated for a while the older one in new york you know who i'm talking about I. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely was just very intrigued and was in love with the idea of me. But when it came down to just conversing, it was not, it ended pretty ugly. So what was his idea of you? Um, 
an arm candy, a trophy wife, something uh, to look at, making other his other female fans jealous. Yeah. Because I'm new. I'm not, I haven't been around the block. And that's super unhealthy. It's super unhealthy. Yeah. It got pretty ugly because my mouth gets very snazzy. How ugly did it get? It got very ugly because one of my friends was buying a bow tie from him and he tried to use an excuse. Now I know they did. Yes, I remember you do. that, yeah. And he tried to use the whole excuse. Oh, I want us to be together. But what does her money have to do with me and you? Like it was it was just crazy. So I had to like curse him out. Wow. And months later he tried to talk to me again, but I was over and done with him. So I mean with the inbox thing, with the messages on social, mm -hmm. I'm sure females get like five, six times the number of messages than males right. get. What what is it about that? Like about the D, about the inbox DM type yeah, of thing? like attention. You know, everyone loves attention, but the whole attention thing you could just look through somebody's pictures and like what they like on Instagram or Facebook. But when you see them in person, like, there's something totally different. They're perceived a different way. So that's why I don't really like the internet. It's okay. It's cool for entertaining. But, yeah, I'm I'm not at that point in my life where looks are entertaining. Like, I need to be stimulated. So how can a guy go about cutting through the traffic to get to somebody like you? What advice, um, what tips would you get? Just a great conversation. How would he get to the conversation if he can't message you, yeah? Meeting me in person. So he would have to be real savvy, pretty much. Yes. Because in order to meet you, so I don't I mean, know I you. I travel a lot, so it's not like I hide out like you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I travel. I mean, I ran into someone at the airport. I I talk to someone like that. Um, I meet random people from like in and everywhere. So if I really wanted to get at you in a savvy manner, mm -hmm. I would I would not only have to follow you on social media. I actually don't like the people that I talk to or they follow me on social media for like the first six months. To be truthfully honest. What if? All right. What if I follow you? You don't know me. Just a random guy. I'm following you. Checking your moves. And this sounds super stalkerish, but it's it's kind of normal now savvy. in society. And I know, man, I don't want to. This is me thinking in my head. Man, I don't want to shoot her a message because I want to cut through the traffic. So how can I get to meet her? All right. I see she's in New York. I see she's. <laughs> I see she's in Miami. <clears throat> How about I just randomly end up where she's at by looking at her Twitter and see what's up? I've had that happen to me one time. I listed, I think, yeah, I put up a picture and then I put up the, um, it'll ask to add the location. Yeah. And I did that. And the person, like, found out, like, more in depth, like, what is it next to? And they did that. Yeah. And they just, like... Just came to me. It was like a live band playing. And he was like, hey, I see you. This is you, right? What are your thoughts on that? Like, was it creepy? I like... thought it was creepy a bit. Um, but I, like, laughed it off. Yeah. And we started a conversation. It was cordial. But I just thought that was just very creepy. I, stalkerish. I hear that word a lot. Not because I'm a creepy dude. But when I, when I talk to <laughs> girls... Who talk about other creeps. <laughs> there are some creeps out there. So let's talk about creeps, all right? Yes, let's do that. What is it that makes certain people creepy? What creeps you out? What can... Because I'm trying to do this as a way for us to learn as well. Like, what what can we not do so that we're not creepy? Like, um, what's the approach? Like, every school female, us. Yeah, every female has their own discretion of a creep. Um, I could talk on my behalf. A creep, I think that last story that I just explained to you, how the person just found me, it was a bit stalkerish, but I mean, I've had worse stalkers. I've really had a bad experience with stalkers. 
um a creep oh god you just fellas just need to know just how to ask in a non-rude way like As don't be afraid to ask a female like what she likes i think that is like the best way to go so don't be afraid to ask a female what she likes definitely in terms of anything just interest pretty much interest i mean you do it when you want to have sex with a female I'm quite sure you ask like what is what position's good for you. So I feel What do like... you like? Oh, we'll of... <laughs> Remember that song? I sure do. Tyrese and the Brat. Oh my god. That's like from 2001. 2001. Yeah. I think so I I love that video. Yo, the Brat was looking bad at that video. She was dope. She's yeah. still pretty. Yeah. But I feel like you need fellas need to know how to ask a female and don't be afraid of being rejected either. So Give us an example of how you would like to be asked. Um. Okay, something simple as asking me out on a date or a coffee. Like, what are you doing Saturday? Just asking me, like, yeah. what am I doing on a certain day? Or are you, don't ask if you're busy. Just say, what are you doing? Maybe we can go out for yeah. such and such. Or coffee or ice cream or whatever the case may be. Just something very light. Yeah, just... An input on that always keep it open-ended right so yeah when you said don't ask are you busy you're right yes I'm always gonna keep myself yeah. busy yeah I agree with you on that open-ended guys open-ended questions open -ended, please. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the approach all right wait wait we're gaining some traction here <laughs> I'm feeling a little proud. The creep life. But another creepy thing males do, they use their friends to to be the messenger. I hate it. I think that's a bit Yeah. It, it's super it's super like junior high school level. Yeah. Even I don't think I ever I never use a friend to be a messenger. What would happen often though mm -hmm. is I would get messages from girls' friends, where their friend would come over, like, oh, my friend thinks you're cute. I would get that, like, very often. And, of course, I don't mind it, like, especially if the girl's cute. Especially if the girl's, what if she's not cute? <laughs> <laughs> what if she's not cute? Yo, if she's not cute, I'm trying to remember back when it happened when it, with the girl who was not cute. I've always been a nice guy. I'm just a nice guy. I would consider myself. Hopefully, I'm a nice guy for the I'm most part. Very upfront. That is one thing you do not have to worry about. I'm very upfront <laughs> and open. I'm sorry. If I don't like something, I'm going to tell you, whether you want yeah. to hear it or not. Yeah, I mean, I would say, I mean, she's she's cool. Like whenever I say she's cool, that's pretty much like a hit. Like nah, I, she's mm, cool, but I wouldn't really right. move. <laughs> move with move nah, with I'm it. good. Yeah. Pretty much. Um That's funny. But yo, like a friendship is always on the table. Yeah, friends. But I've never crazy enough, I've never dated any of my good male friends. There was one that tried to approach me, but it wasn't happening. Yeah. He would have drove me crazy, like I would have been crazy. I probably would have been locked up or something. Yeah, we don't want that. We don't want that at all. But no, I've never dated any of my male friends. Crazy enough. Have, have anyone, has anyone that you've dated, mm -hmm. are, are they still your friend to today? I mean, to today. My uh, exes to this day. or the pre people I've past talked to? Exes, people you've talked to. I do. I do talk to pretty much all my exes. Yeah. A couple of the people that I talk to, um, two of them, no, they ended bad. But the first one that like put my heart in like the bottom of the bottom, we joke about it. We still talk. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. But he definitely put my mindset in a different perspective at the age of 16. But yeah, I still talk to them. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a learning and growing experience mm -hmm. and you're right like you do learn to laugh from heartbreak 
I know. <laughs> but he did me dirty. As painful as it may have been at the time. It sure was. Yeah. But yeah, we laugh about it. Because <clears throat> I've broken some hearts. How ha- many of Had ways? my heart broken a few times as well. Um, <laughs> how many have I broken? Like, I don't literally break them on purpose and keep number like yo that's one that's a six one yo that's a six one i broke son i don't do that how many maybe (laughs) maybe a handful that's enough in your lifetime yeah i mean yeah let's put it like this more than what i would have liked to do okay Especially being the person that I am now, I, I want to really practice a life of kindness, compassion, love, mm-hmm. you know, gratitude, and and just mindfulness. Gotcha. So as I grow into being a more mindful person, breaking anything, relationships, hearts, like just just hurting people in general. Mm-hmm. Is something that that becomes reflective. Yeah, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah, that becomes reflective of the type of person I am, and I don't want to be that type of person. So that's what it comes down to. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's all a learning experience. Gotcha. I'm just glad that I'm actually learning from it. Some people don't; they just continue doing Keep the same on thing. Mm-hmm. But I'm actually learning, becoming better, so that when I am married and have children. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm at a point where I'm fulfilled. I'm at a point where I can be happy with myself mm-hmm. in the situations that I'm in. And that only comes from learned experiences. Gotcha. Are your parents still together? Yes. So do you 30 think, plus years. Yes, 30 yeah. plus years. Yeah. So do you think that their relationship is inspiring? Of like the whole dating and someday you'll get married and absolutely I don't think it's inspiring in terms of dating because well not the dating yeah. but the whole companion companionship partnership, yes. holistic compatibility absolutely yes. absolutely that's good yeah hey parents yeah mom and dad <laughs> mom and pop as I have in my cell phone oh god. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, shout out to Mr. and Mrs. Kelly. Yes, I want some vegan food. We'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, anywho, back to the dating life. Yeah. So, have you dated any female friends? Have I dated any female friends? Yes. Ah. Uh... It depends what you consider data. I'm always like finding loopholes. Right? I guess dating. you can say, I guess. I mean. No friends with benefits, please. <sighs> no friends with benefits. No friends with benefits? Yeah, no. So when really so should. dating a female friend, what, what is that considered? Like a female friend going are, where? You guys are continuously hanging out with each other. You guys are developing a connection, a strong connection. Emotionally, physically, possibly, and mentally. That's a lot deeper than just a female friend, though. Right. Yeah. So, have you dated a female friend? Nah. Has someone once? Because a a female a female friend, I would say, is platonic. Of course. With the title, female friend, platonic. Right. Like how me and you are. Yeah. Right. And a date, depending on the date, I guess, some dates can imply more than platonic. So it depends on the date and the context. Right. See what Have I'm you saying? you look past the whole friend zone and you just look to her like more sexually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it, Aquarius. Uh, you guys went on more than one date. So first of all, more than one date that doesn't happen too often really? with me. Yeah. Oh God, you one of those. In, in terms of, like what I said, it depends on the, the date, you because know? things can move to a date to something else real fast. 
This is true. Okay. See what I'm saying? So. So okay. So scratch that. So the first question that I asked: Have you? Nah, nah. I want to get back to that. Okay. Because okay. I really want to analyze. Because I haven't looked at that dynamic. So I have female friends, right? Mm-hmm. Strictly platonic. Some female friends, they like sisters to me. Mm-hmm. And we hang out. We may go places. We bounce ideas. To, each yeah, other. to some people, it may be considered a date because we're out, certain location, oh, date night, whatever. But it's still platonic. It's a platonic date. Of course. And then we have dates that are intimate dates, maybe with the intention of something more. Right. So and it, that's it all what depends. I'm going for. So, right. So, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. intimate dates. Have I ever had intimate dates? With a female friend. With a female friend. Yes. That's, that's like, in a way, a catch-22. Because I wouldn't take a female friend on an intimate date because she's a female friend. See what I I'm mean, saying? some people want to take it further. That's the question I'm asking. Did you want to take something further than what it was? Did I want to take it further? Ever? Not, not to my memory. Okay. So there, there would be maybe ch- times where a female friend of mine wanted to take it further with me, mm-hmm. but I wasn't too comfortable with that. Why wasn't you? Because I didn't find them attractive in that. Okay. That meant, yeah. Okay. In that, yeah. So that's that's why I wasn't comfortable. Because I know, and this comes with the learning again that. Once you cross that boundary, mm-hmm. there's no going back. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. So, if you, that's the first thing. Once you cross that boundary, there's no going back. Once you cross that boundary with the wrong intention, not only is there no going back, but a lot of times there's no going forward either. I mean, as long so as that, you that guys, just messes I feel up like everything. As long as you guys have a mutual understanding, you guys talked it out. Yeah. I feel like Conversa- that can go a communication long way. is key, absolutely. Yeah, I feel like if you have a mutual understanding on whether you're gonna go forward or not, yeah. you can mess it up. And if you guys don't go forward successfully, then possibly you can't you guys can be friends, but it's just not gonna be as close as before. So with that being said, it brings up this question Have I ever had a female friend that I had sex with? And then after having sex I feel we like were just that female breaks, friends. I, I feel like that would break the bond, but I mean, you're a guy, so what is your answer? I'm a female, so I'm more emotional. So yeah. I'm going to get more emotionally attached. Some females aren't as emotional, or at least true. maybe on, on surface they pretend not to be. Mm-hmm. But I've, I've actually had maybe at least one encounter where that happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Now that I think about it. And did it end ugly? Or? Nah, nah, still cool, yeah. Okay, so then that's good. Yeah. Okay. But otherwise, it ended ugly. So, <laughs> I can only remember one situation in particular that ended pretty ugly. Mm-hmm. And this was with someone who we can say like may have liked me a lot more than... Right. The other way around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And me being who I was at the time, young male, I wasn't really too interested in the emotional connection, mm-hmm. but we did have a sexual connection. Right. So it ended ugly when I wasn't willing to engage with her on the emotional level she wanted to engage in. Miami? No, nah, I wasn't in Miami. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of Miami, though, yo, yo, speaking of Miami, <laughs> speaking of Miami, what did I tell you about Miami first? Let's start there. You told me about an encounter. It sounded similar, but no, I think that's the one that you ended up cool with. Yeah, I'm cool with everyone in Miami. Okay, so yeah, yeah but so there, there was a situation in Miami as well. It was, it didn't end off nowhere, nowhere. that bad. But it was something that to this day still hurts me in a way. To know that I hurt. Her. Hurt. Th- yeah, yeah. Okay. Because she, like, super, super great person. Mm-hmm. I did have feelings for her. Still, to this day, like, I only wish her the best. Like, whatever she needs that I could provide, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like I'm always here, and yeah, it was it was a very, I would say, a selfish move move on my part, mm-hmm. and that's that move alone is is something that made me approach dealing with females differently, completely differently. Gotcha. In terms of sensitivity level mm-hmm. dealing with certain levels of sensitivity in terms of communication i was honest okay because you know when i was approached on certain things i did tell the truth like yeah this is what happened i didn't lie about it mm-hmm. um in the beginning or overall overall okay go ahead yeah i mean we we weren't technically an item yeah we weren't an item technically okay. But we did. We shared a lot of time together, okay. and of course, that's what brings that emotional bond. Once that right. emotional bond is there, it doesn't the technicalities for females don't matter? No, you it know. Doesn't. So me as a male, I'm thinking practical, technical, technically. Da, 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 da. Together, but, but when it comes to the girl. conversation, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. the emotions just take over, and nothing else matters. The technicalities don't matter. Very interesting. Yeah. So do you stalk her on social media? Do I stalk? No, nah, I don't. You haven't? No, nah, no, nah, okay. nah. I'm not much of a social media stalker. <laughs> I have, I have, you know, checked out a few girls here and there. But in terms of, like, the, the messages and the no, comments no, no, like, and stuff like that. just to see what she looked like just, and how she doing, like, stuff like that. No, nah, not really. Like, no, no, no. Right now in my life, so I'll be, I'm in my late 20s. Mm-hmm. And now, a lot of the energy that I put forth is less about what other people are doing okay. in their lives. So, Facebook, I mean, face, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, <are> you? <laughs> Facebook. Facebook. So, fa- Facebook, Instagram. LinkedIn. All that stuff. I'm not like, I don't care about timelines. I don't care about what other people are doing. If I do a post, I do a post. People comment. I get to it when I get to it. I'm not perusing timelines right now. Yeah. You know, like my phone, I keep my, my phone on silent. silent. That's that's you that's how I move. Air, now. Airplane yeah. mode. Yeah, I that's, definitely do that a that's, lot. That's how I move. So when I'm working on a project or something, I'm focused. You're not distracted at all. You know, my intention is to be mindful. In the moment, present, mm-hmm. like meditation is a big thing for me. Um, I'm big on living sort of a, a Zen lifestyle. Right. So these are all things that I'm into right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what I'm about. Yeah. That's good. So do you feel you would date have a different dating approach from now until back into? Maybe you was twenty one. Absolutely. When I was twenty one, I had no dating approach at all. My my approach wasn't to date. My approach was to have sex. <laughs> pretty much, that's it. You know. Now my approach to dating isn't really an approach to dating. It's an approach to getting to know people for who they are. I want to get to know people for really who they are, like deep level, like. I want to know what their what they feel their purpose is. I want to know what drives them. I want to know what moves them, what excites them. You know, I want to know what strikes curiosity in their mind. I want to know, you know, what it is they enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. All of that stuff. Gotcha. Like that's the stuff I care about. I don't even care about sharing the same bed as them. I want to know what really makes them them the embodiment of who they are okay like okay. higher level higher higher level stuff that's 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 my interest right now that's what moves me that's what stimulates me you know like the physical stuff is oh my god like temporary yeah not even this not even temporary yeah but i mean it doesn't even mean any much. that's that's like surface level it is. Yeah. Like, I want to know what's what's on the inside. I want to know what's really on the inside. Interesting. Good to know. 
Well, ladies, you can definitely uh, you definitely can stalk Aquarius. Yeah, ladies, sh- <laughs> sh- sh- show me your insides. <laughs> Don't you dare! It will not go down. Yo, like you it. know I had to slick sneak something slick in. You know you a low. You know you a creep. <laughs> Ah, uh, man. This is so hilarious. This is very interesting. So, do you have any questions as far as the whole dating on the female? Yo, so I pretty much asked the questions guys wanted because guys are so like simple and y'all. Just, yeah, like even when I talk to my some of my friends, it's like, yo, that's all you want to know, man. Um, But yeah, like, what is it that really intrigues females about a guy well what is what are some things guys can do that would cause you know a girl to be intrigued and definitely attention a nice soft subtle attention every female loves attention yeah i mean i like flowers some other female may may like you you know following her around she likes that she likes to chase like attention definitely some sort of attention. You just need to know what type of attention and how to approach it with that different female. What's your love language? Have you read that book? No, I took the test. Yeah. I cheated. You know I can't sit down for a long time, but I, I've been reading lately. Um, I'm definitely affection. I'm a sens- you know I'm a sensual girl. So yes, touch definitely. And then what are the di- what are the five? So I don't even know. It's, it's, it's I know I'm touch and you gifts, have and gifts, research. stuff no, like that. That was last. Gifts was last. It was like touch, and then um, words. I know I need like reassurance. I need to know that I'm doing my part. I forgot the other three, but those are definitely my two. And I was like, yeah, this is me all the way. Yeah, I gotta use the bathroom. Can you pause real quick? <laughs> <laughs> We are back from Aquarius' little bathroom break. Yeah. Just had to believe myself a minute. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, that is my language. My two, my top two that I know was definitely on point. Do you know yours? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually put this on Facebook um, a little while ago. I'm definitely... A touch person, mm-hmm. um, very tactile, you know, waist grabs, stuff like that. Lord, you're an ass guy. I'm gonna assume. I, I like I like everything I could get. <laughs> get. <laughs> Go on with the conversation. So, yeah, I'm definitely a, a, a touch person. That's my my love language, touch. Okay. And and this is just in general, like even with my homeboys giving high fives and stuff like that. Um, you know, it, it's just how I express my affection, family, friends, just touch in general. Right. When it comes to express expressing my affection verbally, I'm probably the worst at that. Like saying I Why? love you, like saying I love you or Bay and all that kind of oh, stuff. Wow. I never really got into it. It was never really my style. So my my love language is definitely touch. touch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm a I'm a good communicator. I consider myself to be a pretty well communicator in general, but in terms of expressing my love through communication verbally, okay. it's it's just not something I really felt comfortable, comfortable with. Yeah. Okay. So, how does a female know that you love her? A female knows that I love her or like her or feel a certain way about it when well I would say I enjoy being playful mm-hmm. with females so when we joke around and laugh you know have inside jokes stuff like that you know it's it's kind of a way of saying I'm comfortable with you okay. you know opening up other than that definitely like the little subtle nuances like you know, uh, a grab here or there, laughing, um, you know, touch here or there. Mm -hmm. Like what you say, you're a sensual person. Some 
touch points may be considered more sensual right. than others. So, yeah, yeah, definitely, you know, touch, some eye contact. The little stuff, like the little nuance kind of Good stuff. Good old Capricorn yeah. and Taurus the Capricorn. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was a fun discussion on dating and the whole online in-person ordeal. Yeah, absolutely. I'm definitely looking forward to listening back on it. This should be very And reviewing it. Yes, and partially, maybe a part two. Yeah, it should be a part two. Later might have on to down the line. Might have to invite some more people to the party. Yes, and talk about their whole dating yeah. experience. Get a panel discussion or something. <laughs> who knows? Or some more stories. Maybe hear some more stories. Well, yeah. By then, who knows what kind of, as craziness. you would say, craziness. Craziness. I might be into by the end of this year. Who knows? I might be married. I don't believe it. Um, I don't. I don't. Not. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Bakara Session. Have a good day. Peace. <laughs> that was the crazy episode of the talk about millennial dating with myself and Mr. Aquarius. I have not talked to that man in so long, but I hope all is well. Um... Yes, so that's a talk about how I feel about dating. I'm very in person. I do. Not, I really do not like sitting on my phone, consuming my time on the phone, unless I'm actually talking on the phone. But the whole texting thing, DM thing, I'm I'm not with it. As far as dating or friendship wise, like I'm just not with it. I don't feel like it's it's intimate at all. Um. But yes, I hope y'all enjoyed. I'm sorry again for the poor, poor quality. I've definitely improved. Um, but yes, let me know how you feel, what you like, what you didn't like. If y'all want to have a part two with me and Mr. Quays or part two with others, I would love to know. Definitely hit me up. Instagram, more Makara. Or you can hit me up on Facebook, email, which is mormacara at gmail. I will respond on Instagram. But yes, yeah, so let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you agree, if you disagree. And definitely let me know if you want to do, if you want me to have a part two. Because I'm definitely down for another open discussion. And it will not take this long to release. So just letting you know. But thank you guys so much for tuning in to my craziness. That's definitely my craziness. That's definitely how I am. Um, unless you get me on my bad side. And that's a whole nother, a whole nother thing that you don't want to see. But um, yeah, hit me up. Also, subscribe, follow more Makara. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time. Bye, y'all.